Okay, first we will need 7-Zip to extract the emulator. Link to this page will be in the description below. Once you get here, you have your download button for your 64-bit and your 32-bit at the top of the page. Now let's head over to vim.net. This is where we will download the emulator. Link to this page is in the description below. Once you're here, let's go ahead and click on emulation layer. Scroll down to Saturn, find Kronos, go ahead and click on the Windows logo and your download should start. Once it's finished, let's go up to the top right, click on the three little dots, select downloads, show in folder. We can exit out of the browser and let's drag that file to the desktop. Exit out. Now we need to extract that file. So all you wanna do is right click on the file, go to 7-Zip, extract here. Now you are gonna get a lot of files after the extraction, so if you would like to create a new folder and put them all in one folder to make everything a lot neater, you can do that. All right, let's go ahead and delete the zip folder. So right click and delete. Now let's open the emulator, and that's gonna be this file right here. First, let's go up to file, settings, and let's go over to video. For the video core, I'm gonna leave it at OpenGL for the best performance. OSD core, leave it at OSD interface. Window resolution, leave it at the original aspect ratio. And if you would like for this emulator to start in full screen, when you load it up, you can go ahead and click start in full screen. For the upscale filter, I'm gonna bump this up to 4X BRZ. HQ 4X also upscales, but it will make your games laggy. Tessellation, I'm gonna change it from CPU to GPU tessellation. Mesh mode, I'm gonna change it to improved and I'm gonna leave the GPU RBG off. Go ahead and click OK. Now let's go back up to file, settings, and this time let's go over to view. Under high menu bar, go ahead and select on full screen and make sure high toolbar is on full screen. OK. One last time, back up the file, settings, and let's go over to input. Under port one, you're gonna see pad. Go ahead and click on this little icon. Now I'm gonna be using the Xbox One controller with this emulator. A wire controller will work as well. Now to edit your buttons, all you wanna do is click on the button you're ready to edit. We're gonna start with the up button. So just click on it and then hit the button on your controller. Left, hit the left button on my Xbox One controller. Down, right, and then we're gonna come over here X, I'm gonna do X on my Xbox One controller, A, A, B, and Y. Now for Z and C, of course I don't have those two extra buttons on my Xbox One controller. For the Z, I'm gonna do my right shoulder button. And for the C, I'm gonna do my left shoulder button. And then we have these trigger buttons up here. I'm gonna do left and right. Close. Now, if you're playing a game that you may want to use the analog stick in, then you might want to come back up here under port one and change this from pad to 3D control pad. Go to edit, and this gives you the 3D Sega Saturn controller pad. Same thing, to set up your analog, you just click on whatever side of the analog you're ready to set up. So this will be the right, you just click it, and then hit the right on your analog stick. Now let's go ahead and load up a game. Let's go up to file, Eject slash load ISO. Locate wherever you have your Saturn ROMs on your computer. In my case, I have one on my desktop, Daytona USA. Now, when you extract the Saturn ROM, it's gonna be extracted into a folder. Inside of that folder, you're gonna have a bunch of bin files and you're gonna have one Q file. To make that game load, you're gonna wanna select the Q file, open. and your game should load up. Another way to make your games load up is simply drag the entire folder containing all the bin files and the Q file directly onto the emulator and the game will just load up that way as well. Now, if you would like to go full screen, you just wanna go up to view, full screen, or you can press Alt plus return.